down to verse 26. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verses 22 down to verse 26. It says this. And he came to Bethesda, and they bring him a blind man unto him, and he besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man, and by the hand, and led him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes, Jesus is very interesting, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know about for y'all, I know y'all deep, but when I would have heard, <laughs> if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men, but I see him as trees walking. And after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him to look up. And he restored him and he saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house. Yeah. Saying, don't you even, go, I'm sorry, he said, don't neither go into the town nor tell it to anyone that was even in the town. Yeah. Somebody say amen. 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 We're going to begin uh, our brand new series and we want to bring with it uh, from this standpoint. Uh, we'll lift it up. Tell you the neighbor. Neighbor. I need you to focus. I need you to focus. You want a sign. You want a sign. All right. Wow. Say to your other neighbor. I know they want to listen too good, but I want to make sure they hear you. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Hey, you didn't hear. I'm going to need you to focus. I'm going to need you to focus. Because we on the side. Bless you and we adore you, we exalt you and hallow your name. You are worthy and holy, you are awesome and mighty. You're all together lovely. I pray that even the day you allow us to decrease, that you would increase. Move by your spirit in the day. For it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, O oh God. Even the day, Lord God. Thank you that your word would never turn to your void, but the common sin of the doing proper thing the word's been sent. Download your mind, download your heart, download your spirit, God. In us for us and to us, O oh God, even today. I pray that even now, God, you get the glory, you get the honor. Jesus, you be lifted up and draw to yourself. Save and deliver, heal and refresh, revive and restore, manifest and manifest magnify yourself even today. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we expect you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can you celebrate the Lord for who he is? Focus. We are on assignment. Jesus said something very really interesting in John chapter 20, verse 21. When he came up from the grave, he turned, came up to the disciples. When he got to the disciples, he said this. Then Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you, because I want you to understand that even as my Father sent me, so send I you. David, David, David. The same way. The same way. Jesus, Jesus. Has been sent by the Father. Has been sent by the Father. So have you. So have you. You're on assignment. You're not just present. You're not just here for existence. You're not just here to take up space. You're here with an intent from the kingdom to make a difference in the lives of men. You've been sent like a Daniel to bring the kingdom of heaven in the midst of the kingdom of men. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Some people will never know the character of God, the nature of God, the honor of God, the order of God. So what God does is he wraps it all up in a believer and then sends a believer into the culture. Yes. And the only way they understand what it is for a man to look one woman for 27 years and enjoy the whole process, the whole time, like I'm enjoying it with Pastor Mark. You know what I'm saying? The only way a man will understand how to go from not understanding, not having a father, to being a father for five kids. The only way that whole culture, that whole nature, that whole honor is when God wraps his kingdom, because the kingdom is within us, downloaded in us, that hard drive begins to come through our life, then he sends us packaged and prepackaged into the culture, into the genre, into the into the business, into the school system, and into your job. You are not at an employment, you are a deployment. What I said was, you're not having employment in this life, what you have is deployment in this life. Jesus says, you are my ambassadors. You are literally sent to represent the kingdom in another kingdom, to represent my culture in the midst of another culture. You're not supposed to act like them, look like them, live like them, love like them, you are supposed to demonstrate that the kingdom was present. They just have to look at you because you represent and represent. Represent, 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 represent. You, you, you don't represent just yourself anymore. You don't represent your neighborhood no more. You don't represent your family no more. You represent Jesus and the king and his kingdom wherever you go. So, 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 just for your help, I'm going to need you to focus. Perfect. 
wilderness. He doesn't choose his broken people to show how he can heal. He uses wounded people to show how he can restore. He uses people that are out of it to see how they've been brought back to purpose. That they reveal how powerful your God is in watch this. Not his life, in yours. Yes, sir. Somebody say, I'm hearing this. I'm hearing this. Say, even focus, beloved. Focus, focus. In the midst of all this television, in the midst of Washington, mm, focus, focus, focus. Fo fo Some say, don't play focus, focus. Don't you get caught up with the tweet. Don't you get caught up with the Snapchat. Don't get caught up with all of the Instagram. I mean, you got stuff coming from everywhere right about now. This is the one season where, watch this. I told the young people the other night, I said, listen, my challenge was we got blue light pretty good when I look back. See, we can get off the bus, go home, and get away from everything. Everybody. Now y'all bring everybody home with you. I don't know how you live at home with everybody. I don't know how everybody follow you everywhere. I don't know how you gotta listen to everybody, see everybody, hear everybody's voice about your life. No wonder some of them dropped into depression. No wonder. And I got so many voices coming at my life. It's over Twitter, it's over, my fault. over Facebook. No, if you keep looking, anybody will keep speaking. Focus. focus is not just what you look at, but focus is what you want. Come on, focus is not just what I look at, but it's focus when I decide what I won't look at. Focus is not just what you think, but it's deciding what I refuse to think about. Oh, don't play with me. Yeah, everybody has bad thoughts. It's just how long you choose to think about the bad thoughts. So if you can land on that thing, you let it lay too long. Yeah. Man, that thing went from your mind and got down into your heart. Now it's inside your life because we didn't stop it in time. Yeah. Say, but focus. focus. Focus is not just that. It's what you think, but how you think. It's the way you see. It's what you look at and how long you look at and what you choose not to look at. All of that is focus. Yeah. Shout, I'm going to need you to focus. I need you to focus. You want a sign. You want a sign. You want a sign. You want a sign. Winston Churchill put it this way. He says, you will never reach your destination if you stop with those stones and every dog that bark. <laughs> you got to answer everybody to that. Hmm. You got to answer everybody's attack, everybody's comment. You got to stop. You can't even finish your job because you're trying to figure out who said something. And you live in distracted and don't even know how to distract you are. Pray for me. I even drive distracted sometimes. I do. I pick the phone up. You have to say, put the phone down. And I realize I'm driving distracted. It's one thing to drive a car like that. It's a terrible thing to live a life like that. Focus 
when Ruth said, let's roll. But my focus wasn't on my destiny, it was on my history. So I let Ruth go to there because I was so focused on my past. On how much I was hurt, on how much I was pain I was in, who died on me, who left on me, so much I lost focus. And he and her, they went on to Boaz and got a blessed life. And she can't blame Ruth for it. Who are you blaming for your broken focus? Shout focus! You can't blame everybody else for where you at. Some of this stuff is our stuff and our choice that we put ourselves where we at because we let stuff break our focus. We let people break our focus. Somebody say I'm hearing it. I want you to be encouraged because even if your focus gets broke, you still have your assignment. Yes. Yes. I'm still going to use you even if you miss it. Yes. See, even though Adam missed it, he still is the responsible for one producing the old wow. human generation. Yes. Wow. Even though all these people missed it, God still uses David for purpose. Yes. Yes. What I'm not saying is if you get out of focus, you can't get back. That's right. Say restore the focus. Restore. Pay attention to what you're focusing on, what you're listening to, what you're taking time with so that your focus be there, so that you can reach the assignment of your life and get there. What took out Moses from getting to his assignment was his own emotions. Yes, yes. Come on. He got so mad at the people, hit the rock twice. So yeah, don't let your anger. Don't let your anger. Rob your future. Rob your future. You will break your focus. Why this man, this is one, this whole family in Pennsylvania right now is living with a woman that's been shot four times. One man's anger, he snapped and broke his entire focus. He took his life. Tell him your neighbor, neighbor. your sign is too important. Your time is too valuable to be hanging around, distracted, diverted, and divided. By the wrong people. By the wrong people. If you believe that, go ahead and give them praise, right? You got to focus in this season. You got to focus in this time. There's so much coming at the body, sending out everybody around us that we got to really focus real quickly and bring our mind back, bring our thoughts back, bring our spirit back, bring our worship back, bring our praise back. And if you got to even sit by yourself to bring it back, bring it back by yourself. Bring it back to where it shouldn't be. Bring it back to where it's supposed to be. And to my, as a matter of fact, there's an acronym for focus that says follow. Follow one course until you're successful. Yes. Just follow one course. Stop being divided all over the place. Working on three or four things at one time. That's why we can't finish the first thing. Yes. Why? My focus is broken. And so my assignment is messed up. Why? Because I'm not focused on where I should be. Somebody say it, man. Yes. So, so even as we looked at that, the idea of you being on assignment, say I'm on assignment. The Bible tells us that we are on assignment. You're not just on the earth, you're on assignment. As a matter of fact, I want you to know that man, what we need to do sometimes is teach us as the church that your assignment is not just at the church. Right? Sometimes the only time we talk about assignment is with your gift. With your call. With your anointing. And I'm glad that you have a gift. And I'm glad you have a call. And I'm glad you have an anointing. But all of them will be wiped out if you don't focus your living. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. I want you to hear me very clearly. No matter how gifted you are, if you can't govern your life, you will lose the gift, the assignment, the call, and, the, and everything else in your life. So sometimes the other assignments of our life, in the midst of the assignment of our life, because you don't just have a assignment. It's kind of like what the idea of Solomon would say as he opens up Ecclesiastes. He says, uh, this is the preacher, David's son, and the king. Which means he didn't have one assignment. He had yes. more than one assignment. Yes. So you are able to have more than one assignment in your life. Yes. See, my job right now, my primary job is really husband. Yes. Husband. Husband. Yeah, that's my assignment, Say That's my assignment for one woman. This one. This is my assignment. My second assignment is my children. Yes. All five of them. <laughs> all five of them. Did you hear me? I said all five of them. Yes. Yes. 
to the point I was driving up to a place that I didn't want to go to yesterday and I told myself, why are you doing this and that? When we came back, you on the side. to do it. Right. So sometimes you need the assignment to see your parenting as an assignment for right. your life. You know what I mean? Like, it's wonderful if I get all of the church to heaven, but if I don't get my children to heaven, I would have wasted my time. Oh, I know it would be great. I know, I know. It's all right. See, see, the essence of this thing is really is, I got more than one assignment, and you got to make sure you know the priority of what they are, particularly in the world we live in right now, because they'll pull you, and you pull them from but you better figure out and get focused on what's your assignment. Yeah. Let me give you a few of them since you're here. You know what I'm saying? If you're a woman and you ain't married, your assignment is to be the baddest chick on the planet. As a yeah. That is your assignment. It, 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 I mean, you want to be so fly, you make people mad when you're walking the door. Wow. This is my assignment. Wow. I'm single and I can do this. And it don't matter how old you are. Yeah, like your real job. Yeah. 
ask you to go demand you to govern your spirit and govern your mindset. Watch this and put your old mouth in check. All right. Okay, okay. I'm talking. To, I'm talking to other people. They don't know what I'm talking about. If it doesn't make you bring your emotions in, in, in control so that the vision of the family can be done, that's called an assignment. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, whether you like it or not, you want to serve. Now tell them like I'm saying this. Get focused! Let's go. Let's go. And, and, and the first thing we want to deal with, because the idea of how we deal with it is imperative, because it begins talking about how we go on assignment. Let's go into that, Jazz, if you can. You can move that. It's the idea of being on assignment. And again, it's a lot of different areas of your life. It's not one area of it. But assignment means you're going to have to address imperatives. Say it with me. I got to address my own imperatives. It's not like you don't know that you ain't, you know. Come on. Okay, okay, let's, let's deal with my man, because I don't want you to think that I'm talking about you. But, but it says, he came to Bethesda, say Bethesda, and they brought a blind man to him and besought him to touch him. Now, now what's interesting about this is this, that, that the blind man knew a couple things. You know the first thing he knew? Blind. Come on, you know what I mean? That they know you can't see, but you think you can see. And then you want other folk to believe you can see. And then sometimes we believe that we can see when we can't see ourselves. Uh, come on now, you've been tripping before. You've been stumbling before. You fell over some stuff before in your own life, and you thought you could see, but you thought you were stumbling and hitting and breaking and falling, it meant you were blind in an area. Come on. And I got to find what my weaknesses are and be willing to deal with them to be able to get to the assignment of my life. This, this cat, I love him because he has so much faith, he's still going after his assignment with no sight. Yeah. My fault. This would mean he like walking by faith, not by So, so, so literally, right? He got enough faith to be able to do like this. Take me to Jesus. <laughs> Oh, 
all of a sudden, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, bro, I thought this was it. Can I help you? Because That's right. Yeah. Come on, sis, don't say it's gonna be an equal opportunity if you know, on the thunder. If you got attitude and wanna bring attitude, keep attitude, that's and right. you know everybody know you for attitude, that's a problem. That's right. Because you're in darkness and don't know. Right. The Bible says, set your affections on things above. Watch this now, come on, because I gotta make my focus him. He has to be my focus. The word has to be my focus. If I want life in my life, I want God in my life, then I'm gonna let him do it. Now I'm gonna submit myself. Oh, yes, sir. No husband can make a woman ever submit. Amen. Yeah. Why submit your self? Glad you heard it, because he ain't got nothing to do with it. No so now the challenge becomes uh -huh. my own imperative. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Put my own issues. Yeah. And you know what I found out? No. This cat says, he says, watch this. And he they, they says, they brought the blind man. They brought the blind man to him. Yeah. The thing that helped me was this, is to say it is this. At least he had some friendships at the beginning of Jesus. That's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Do you have any friends that when they see you in darkness, care enough to move your flesh and to get you to Jesus? You ought to have some folk that know your impairments and ain't even scared of your impairments. You a trip and I know you a trip. You a trip.
I declare to you that God is light. Yeah. And in him, there ain't no darkness. Say, Nate, let's go ahead and address them in paradise. So we can get to our side. Go ahead and give a praise real quick. Second, I'm actually address them in paradise. The second thing I want you to do is this is in the text. He lays it out. As we turn to it, we'll go here and look at it. He tells us in John, in fact, I'm sorry. He tells us in Mark. He lifts it up. I got to give him a glass. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You go ahead and do the next one. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, say your name. Say your name. Get your life in the line. Get your life in the line. And the reason he says this is this. Look what he says over here. He says, and he took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the town, and then he spit on his eyes. Mm. Still messes with me every time I read it. Right. to a brother from the hood, okay? Anytime we heard somebody go, it's over. Come on. Hey. Let's, let's. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even, I'm sorry. Pray for me. I didn't even know you was about to spit out the window. I'm just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad reaction. Pray for me. All right. He said, he said, when he spit in his eyes and he put his hands on him, he said to him, do you see anything? I like this because what it tells me is this, God will work with you and he'll work with you process to get you to assignment. Yeah. Yeah. Too many times we tell people you got an assignment and they think they can show up in it automatically. But God's telling us, yes, I can make miraculous things happen. Matter of fact, Jesus could have said something and his eyes could open up. But sometimes God values the process more than we value our purpose. Come on, 
And so he'll slow us down, God. It ain't that he couldn't do it, he's just that he chose to do it different. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't want your testimony to be his testimony. Because then I don't even get the same glory from both of you. But if I use something different, you praise me, but not like you praise me. Now, all three of y'all got four different praises that come up when you go, I am Jesus. Why? Because all of our methods was different. Yeah. But it's the same Jesus that delivered us. Yeah. Yeah. Say, bring your life in the line. First thing he says is this, he took the man by the hand. Say, take him by the hand. Yeah. Say, that's called humility. Yeah. If you're going to get to your assignment, you can't get there with your proud self. That's all right. Yeah. Well, Come on, just admit to the fact that I'm already blind, and if it brought me to Jesus, it might be good if he sticks out his hand, yes. and I take it. <laughs> you know, we got some people, when God sticks out his hand and blesses them in one way, they go, that ain't the way. See, what I thought it was going to be, I thought a certain person was going to give me the money. But she brought sister so-and-so in her Roman self. And so I don't like their hand. Say be humble, be humble, be humble. I'm not going Kendrick, I'm just going spiritual, you know what I'm saying? But be humble, be humble, be humble, young man, be humble. Be, be, be humble enough that when God brings you, that he wants to take you somewhere, let him take you! The only problem God has is that he resists the proud. So good! He don't resist a whole lot of people. <laughs> just the proud. That is awesome! So if he says, come on, Okay, I was waiting. <laughs> but watch this. Do you come on? I was there in the process. Yes. My hand was letting me know I'm already here to take you where you gotta go. Yes. And I'm willing to wait for you until you get ready to move. Oh, you ready to move. Right. Now I gave you the word I'm about to take you out of this. But if you don't go with me while I'm going, you could remain there. Yes. Doing your life already. What are you doing? Wherever he's working on in your life, that's what he's doing. Wonderful. Then he says, watch this, bringing him in the humility. Then he says, take a, take a trip out of the familiarity. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, my fault. Here we go again. The man was where? The best. What was he saying? I ain't healing you there. Yes. You, you can't stay in familiarity and have destiny. That's good. That's real. That's real. Come on. That's real. Come on. Okay. Say your neighbor. Yeah. He ain't. He ain't gonna do it. Gonna do it the way you think. The way you think. He thought if you put if I if I if y'all just bring me to Jesus, I'm gonna get here. Jesus, I look at you. What you didn't know was the place you at was cursed. Wow. Matthew chapter 11, the Bible says, he says he put a curse over them because they wouldn't believe before his miracles. Yes. So you can't keep hanging out in first places. And then some of you hanging out in them and God pulling you out. But he's pulling you out so that he can give you what you're supposed to He takes this man and takes him out of the town that he was in all this time. You gotta stop thinking that just because I'm familiar with it, it's gonna work this way. And sometimes we think this is the only way Jesus can show up. He's like, no, I refuse to work there, but I will work with you. Yes. Yeah. You ever been around people and all of a sudden they get blessed and you mad? <laughs> Tell your neighbor. You might want to check your zip code. <laughs> if you're living in anger, you're living in bitterness, you're living in
you working with you, but we would love to sit next to you, but we didn't sit next to you because your zip code is off the market. He said, he said, I had to lead him out of a familiar, what are you so familiar with you trading for your future? You know, it's like the people when God said delete them and you still got them in your phone. Oh, okay, for the season four. Come on. Them folks still on Facebook? Yeah. Come on, I know that's your old boo, but if they give your life early, everybody gonna be scared. That's right. And you're gonna be one of the people scared. <laughs> but you got them, look, watch this, you got them in a friends category they don't belong in. Come on now. Because they familiar. Come on. And you don't believe God for your future, so you won't let them go. So I hang on to the familiar just in case my future don't work out. So my life is not aligned up, so then God ain't making no movement yet. So God says, when you move, then I move. And if you come with me out of the cursed place, out of the familiar place, then I work with your sight. And I not just give you sight. I like this part. He spit on it. Say spit. Spit. Now, every now and then, God will do something that nobody like it. You don't even like the process yourself. Can I have three people that don't like your process right now? Can I tell you a secret? Except the spit. <laughs> See, if the spit is going to make the difference, spit. comfortable with them in your life. Yeah. Blind folk, they can't see and you can't see, but you depended on their not seeing to help you see. Do that make sense? <laughs> Here we got comfortable. I'm going to tell you how blind people sound when you ask them questions. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, let me go over here. This is how blind people answer when you ask them questions. What up? Why? Because I can't see. Heart folk is the food that would move but won't. With the people is the people that drew back. They used to be close, but now they don't come around no more because, you know, 
they think your impediment is the way you're going to spend the rest of your life. And some folk, they gave up on you. And it's almost good that they gave up because had they not given up, you would have stayed where you was at. That's right. Can I get like two people to thank God for the folk that left you? And then it's another thing for you to let people go. Excellent. And sometimes, watch this, people let you go, but you ain't let them go. So when ain't nobody around, you search them out. They let you go, you ain't let them go. You bring up their name on stuff, you shouldn't be bringing their name up on. You're trying to find them on stuff, and they gone. And then, and then you get mad that they ain't enjoying their life without you. And then you because your life made their life, but they left your life by choice. Oh, you teach it. Come on. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Do you feel them pulling you out of it? Do you feel them pulling you out of it? Instant. And then it was, oh, one other people. They were waiting for the water. They the people in your life, they just hanging around long enough to wait for something to happen. Uh, and matter of fact, they know what you that's going to make it happen. Wow. They're waiting for your God to move on your behalf, and then they're going to jump on them. Yeah. Come on. And it's how you know, because when you move, they don't, but they're close enough to see. Yeah. They don't call you, they got your number. You know what I mean? They don't email you, they got your email. And then every time you see them, they go, hey, I was just thinking about you. Close enough to hang on for the move. Yeah. Okay, move past the day. Okay. Say, so get your life! Get your life! Get in alignment. Get out of the familiar places. Get out, get out of the line places. Get away from the people that are messed up in your life that you already know are not going where you're going. Let's go forward. Hurry up. Let's move around. He says this. Mark 8. He says this. Then he laid his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. Say, made him look up. Made him look up. Sometimes what God is doing in your life because we won't look up is causing us in a situation that we're in between that we have to look up. Uh -oh. Amen. You ever get to a place where you know what you said? God gonna do it. Now that was on, that was on Friday. You know what I mean? But since He didn't move for two weeks, your look up went from looking up to now it's like two months. And because you ain't moved, you're making me look up. I'm looking like looking for you like I never looked for you before. Right. I'm talking about when I walked down this hallway, God will meet me because I've been looking for him all week. Right. Yeah. He's making me look for him and then he makes him be restored. What I love is this, he says this, he says, and then he put his hands on him a second time. Say a second time. <laughs> Say, can you go deep with me for a moment? I was going here anyway, you just don't have to hang on anyhow, praise God. Because what I do really believe that God was doing was to twofold showing us how we as church people and as those in the kingdom can be moved forward in the things of God. Yes. And while we've been in process and we will stay there long enough, come here for a second, because then all of a sudden when he laid hands on his eyes, he spit on him. He spit on him. Yeah. So he puts a hand on him, and he puts the hand on him, right? And he leaves him, and he says, Do you can you see? Then he comes back and he puts his hands on him again. Yeah. A second time. Say a second time. A second time. See what's wonderful is that whenever God moved in the Bible, most of the time he called it the hand of God. Yeah. Say the hand of God. Hand of God. But then all of a sudden, sometimes what God will do is use a person. Okay, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, call the church. And sometimes he'll move with his hand, and then sometimes he'll move with his other hand. Yeah. You say, well, where's that in the scripture? Glad you asked. Matthew, uh, uh, Acts chapter 9, the Bible says that after Paul got knocked down on, on, off the horse, fell on the horse, God told him, listen here, go to this house, and I'm going to give you back your vision. Now, God said he's going to give you back his what? Vision. But he didn't do it for out of what? Person. Jesus. Come on. I was giving you your vision back, but I tend to work through men to help you get to the next season of your life. And if we can just be wise enough to be able to align our life with the people that exist for our life, we can move to the next place in our life. Yeah. If we don't reject them, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. Let's get this last piece. We're going to let you out. Here he is. He says this. This man says this. He goes on to the ideal after the vote. Oh, you can go to the next place. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to go back. He says after the assignment, after that press of the alignment, he goes to the next place. Say, say, neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. It's to the point. It's to the point. It's worth this is about right here. This, this says, Mark chapter 8, verse 26 says this way. After he gave him his sight, guess what he told him to do? 
Go home. Yeah. Go home. Say, go to your house. Go to your house. I'm so glad you are noted at the house of God. <laughs> See, it's one thing to have vision for this house. All right. But he's expecting you to get vision for your own. All right. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to heal you of your impairment because the assignment is going to your house first. That's right. and put you back in the place where you're supposed to be, I can send you back to your house. You realize how many people God sent back home after he delivered them? The Bible says that that man, it was a gathering, cutting himself, killing everything, all that, had demons all in him. The Bible says after he gets delivered, Jesus says a powerful word to him. He runs up to Jesus. Jesus, I got to go with you, man. All the demons is gone. We got to roll. Jesus says, go home. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think we sometimes don't believe that our deliverance goes home. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Now. And sometimes God has to send me and you back home so the folk at the house can see deliverance. Yeah. Yes. And then their focus could change because our focus has changed. Yeah. And then we both are in the what? Change. Mm. Say, Nate. Go to your own house. I know your neighbor got a nice crib. I know your cousin and him is nice, but take your delivered sightseeing self to your own house. Bring your own kingdom perceptions to your own address. <laughs> See, the people that need to know you delivered first is the food in your house. And they need to know that you got sight where you were blind. They need yeah. to know that you can see where you couldn't see, that you yeah. can live where you want to live, that you now can move where you were moving before. Yeah. That you can now take that vision that you got from Jesus and you come back to the house with the love of Jesus, with the light yeah. of Jesus, yeah. with the living of Jesus. Yeah. That makes an impact in your house first. Yeah. Don't change the neighborhood, change house first. Yeah. All right. If you change the house, the neighborhood will shift. Yes. Yeah. See, I think that's where we messed up our witness. And I think sometimes when you read scripture, you read it traditionally, we miss it. But what Jesus says when he was about to leave, this is what he says to the fellows. He says, uh, uh, but you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yeah. And you're going to tell everybody about this. No. Oh, God. Jesus ain't going to say, open your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what Jesus said? Let me see your life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm taking you, I'm gonna deliver, I'm gonna go to heaven, but I want you to go and live such a life yeah. that your life is such a witness. Yeah. God. Glory. That when they see you driving home every night as a man, God. loving all your children, loving your wife, taking care of your bills, doing the right thing regardless of how you feel. Yeah. When they see y'all arguing and then forgiving one another and marrying one another and staying together and watch this for a long season, they'll know that ain't human. Amen. Yeah, that's king. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. They need to see the witness of both Jerusalem. Because sometimes we need a deliverance in the church first. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Judea, the people where people went backslide, need to know that God still works. Samaria, people that mixed up, need to know the truth still works. Amen. And then if anybody left on the planet, <laughs> all over the earth, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let them get focused on the focus that you caught when you met oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Dave, I'm going to need you to focus. I'm going to need you to focus. Because you want a sign. Because you want a sign. Oh, and by the way. By the way. Your sign. Your sign. Is the earth. Is the earth. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you here? Yes. That, that's what Jesus Jesus says. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the church. On earth. Did I read something? <laughs> No, what he said was, you know what I mean, I'm supposed to get delivered and show everybody in the church my gifts, my talents, my strength. Yes. Yes. Come on, the, the scripture said, Thy kingdom come on where? Earth. 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 Yeah, go home. Amen. Love it. Oh, go home. Amen. And when you go home, Amen. take the kingdom with you. Yeah. Assignment, but if your life ain't on assignment, your gift ain't on assignment. If your life ain't on assignment, your 
calling it on assignment. Guess what? You're calling it on assignment. You're anointing it on assignment. I don't care how anointed you are. If your life ain't right, then it ain't going to match up with the assignment of your life. So just get your life right first. Go home and do it first with your own life. And then go change somebody else's life. Set to our feet. Father, we worship you. We adore you. We exalt you. First of all, God, we thank you. I want to thank you for showing me my blindness. I, 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 you know what? Paul put it this way. I glory in my infirmities. You know why? Because when you see infirmities, that's the place where the glory of God is going to show up.